Hello everyone. Welcome to Reactify Labs. Today we will talk about quad tree. So it's it's quad tree. What is quad tree and why do we need quad tree? So let's first understand the real world example where quadri is very very beneficial and then we will go into the theory and other technical definitions of it so do something open your mobile phone open your google maps or apple maps whatever you have and just write in the search bar any any location let's say you may write um the name of any state or any city okay uh, for example i'll take the example of the name of city let's say paris so when you search paris what happens is uh, of the big map or globe you will see a part of like europe somewhere and then paris will be highlighted with a dot okay and then let's say this if this is paris it it gives you a very uh, high level picture of it okay so this is paris basically you can zoom into it so when you zoom into it let's say you decided to zoom here okay so you decided to zoom this area you start seeing this area in zoom then as you keep zooming you will keep seeing more granular details uh currently you are just seeing this part uh, the city as this now if you keep zooming you may get to the street view also you may see some cars parked you may see some um, shops or buildings everything right so this is where quad trees become helpful so we use quad trees for uh, getting those types of features so basically what quad tree does is it helps divide an area into four quadrants and then each quadrant into four more quadrants right so that's how we achieve that zoom in zoom out feature in our maps and that's how we are able to uh, go into as much or as less granularity as possible so where quadri is used usually maps google maps apple maps um doordash uber swiggy zomato everywhere we use this uh, quadri mm. so now that we have an understanding of where quad trees are used it will help us better understand the theory now we know why then what and how are very easy to understand okay just uh, relate with it as i am going to talk about it so what is a quad tree quad tree is basically a hierarchical tree data structure because the name has tree so it's a tree data structure it's a tree data structure designed for spatial partitioning it's a tree data structure designed for spatial partitioning where particularly in 2d spaces okay in 2d space it is characterized by each internal node having exactly four children okay as i told you characterized by each internal node having exactly four children no more no less and these four children basically represent the four quadrants of the space so it's not like this tree where you have actually yes you can represent it like that but more less uh, it's more like this okay similarly this one also has four every every node has four children basically so 
Quad trees serve multiple purposes in computer science and spatial data management. They are used for spatial partitioning. Sorry, not spar, spatial. Spatial partitioning. What is spatial partitioning? Dividing a space into regions to efficiently organize and manage spatial data. They are also used for spatial searches. It facilitates quick and optimized searches for points or data within specific regions. For example, when you say, what are some of the restaurants near me? So that time also quadrants can be used because then it knows, okay, which quadrant to zoom into. Okay, let's say this is your place, this is your city and you live somewhere here. So when you say something near me, restaurants near me, what it does is it goes, okay, this, it falls into this quadrant. Then it knows that it falls into this quadrant. Then it knows that it falls into this quadrant. Then this quadrant, according to that, it keeps on zooming. And that's how spatial searches uh, can be achieved using Quattri. And next is hierarchical representation. So it offers a hierarchical structure that aids in organizing spatial data at different levels of granularity. Okay. So great. Now that we know this, let's talk about the structure. So what is the basic structure of quad tree? I know I have already talked about it, but let's do it in a more formal way. So it has nodes. Each node in a quad tree serves as a container for spatial information and is associated with a rectangular region in a 2D space. Each node is a container and each node has its own spatial information. Each node has child nodes. Nodes are subdivided into exactly four child nodes, representing the four quadrants of the parent nodes region, top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right. And then there are leaf nodes. Leaf nodes are the terminal nodes in the tree structure and contain spatial data or points. They represent the smallest subdivisions in the space. So if there are no more children, it means it's a leaf node. Okay. And as I have drawn before also, this is a node. These are the child nodes. Then for this node, these are the child nodes. For this node, these are the child nodes. Okay. So this is the basic structure of a quad tree. Now, let's see how quad trees are represented. Representation. Hierarchical structure, obviously, it has a hierarchical structure. Hierarchical structure. The quad tree exhibits a hierarchical organization visually re resembling an inverted tree structure. So, it's like this. Inverted tree structure. Each node has four children. If you are having a doubt why inverted tree structure, then it's because the root is at the top. Generally, for trees, actual real world trees, the roots are at the bottom, right? So, that's why the trees in computer science are inverted trees. Okay, and each level of tree represents a different level of granularity in spatial partitioning, right? So let's say if this one represents this big square and each node, these four nodes represent these four, right? Then again, these four nodes represent more granularity of this one, right? So depending on the depth, right, each level, depending on the level of the tree, we get the granularity of the data that is being held by the quad tree okay it's hierarchical structure and then recursive division recursive division the recursive nature of quad tree is evident in how qua each quadrant further subdivides into four child as you can see each quadrant is just keeps on dividing right just keeps on dividing until the leaf node is reached. So it's basically a recursive division with the base condition that uh, the leaf node exists. Okay. 
and this recursive division continues until the desired level of granularity is reached. Uh, it means it's on us what level of granularity we want to see and we stop there. For example, let's say when we are going somewhere, one place to another and we use Google Maps, then in that case, we don't care about what all uh, shops come in our way, right? We just want to know what is the direction. So that level of granularity we need at that time. But while going, let's say we become thirsty or become hungry and we need restaurants. So then we search for the restaurants on our way. Then we need a more uh, granular level of information. So depending on us, the recursive division can stop at any point. Okay. And it efficiently represents the spatial layout basically. Great. Now let's see how querying and searching works in uh, Quadtree. So let's talk about querying and searching. Querying and searching. So point queries. Quadtree's excel in answering point queries efficiently. So if there are point queries, the quadtree's will answer it uh, in a good way like this point just give me this point the information about this point just go into more detail of this point right so this is where quadries are very good next comes uh, when querying for the presence of a point in a specific region the tree's hierarchical structure allows for rapid traversal because of the hierarchical structure it knows which which child of the node to go in right so it's basically a very linear kind of search Thus, it narrows down the search to relevant quadrants that may contain the points. So, if our point is in let's say, this quadrant, then we don't need to worry about these quadrants. We just worry about this. Then, if it's here, then we go just in this, then just in this. So, we don't need to worry about everything else, only that node which has the information. Okay. So, those are point queries. And next comes range queries. So, what are range queries? Range queries involve searching for points within a given rectangular area. Let's say this is where I live. Tell me all the good restaurants near me. So let's say these are the points. So this is range query. So it involves within searching within a rectangular area. Let's say it's within this rectangular area. So that's it. You may wonder why it's a circle. It's a circle because of the radius, right? Even though it's a quadrant, but when we search that, okay, give me all the restaurants within five mile radius. So we, we do this, right? A radius can be of a circle. So the searching will be like this. So that's why it's a circle. So range queries involve searching for points within a given rectangular area. Quad trees make range queries efficient by recursively navigating through the tree, excluding entire quadrants that fall outside the specified range, as I told you. So let's say I live here and I want all the restaurants within uh, four miles of me or five miles of me and it falls within this then it's, it's not going to check into these, right? But it is possible that I live somewhere here. Okay, then it is possible that I may fall in both the quadrants, my five mile radius, that is fine. Still, we know that we don't have to go in these. And even when we go in these, we see that we only have to search for these quadrants in this quadrant. Again, it's divided here. So the space is very limited. So that's where it's efficient, right? And it results in focused search and thus significantly reducing computational overload. Now let's talk about quad trees, but balanced quad trees. Balanced quad trees. So they have something called balancing factor. So maintaining balance in quadrants is crucial for optimal performance. Balancing factors such as the distribution of points across quadrants are carefully managed to prevent uneven subdivisions. This ensures that the tree remains balanced, preventing skewed structures that could impact search and insertion efficiency. And what are the benefits of balance? The benefits of balance include uh, faster search operations, more predictable insertion times, uh, balancing helps maintain a relatively uniform distribution of data, preventing deep and uneven branches that could lead to performance bottlenecks. Okay, 
so why is branching important let's say this is our area so it's for visual representation i am doing it like this but let's say this area is just barren it has nothing okay in real world and this area has too many points then we don't want it to be skewed right all load will fall on this area that's why we need a balancing factor we need to know how to divide our this in four quadrants that the load gets distributed evenly among uh, all the nodes okay so that's why balancing factor is important and that's how it helps in keeping the quarteries fast and efficient okay and now that we have talked about most of the things let's end it with the applications of quarteries so what are the applications of quarteries in real life applications um as i talked about other things like uber maps google maps everything so i am just going to repeat it so first one is gis navigation systems gis navigation systems uh, navigation apps like google maps use quarteries to efficiently store and retrieve map data quarteries allow for quick spatial searches helping users navigate through maps with dynamic zoom levels computer graphics rendering computer graphics rendering we all may not understand it because we are not working in this field but in the computer graphics field also uh, quadri is very beneficial video games and graphic rendering engines they use quadris to manage spatial relationship between objects in a scene this aids in efficient rendering and collision detection okay um another very important use case is image compression surprising right so image compression algorithms like jpeg jpeg that we all must know right jpeg our images are so, uh, stored like this right image dot jpeg so that's the same jpeg so image compression algorithms such as jpeg utilize quartries to represent and process image data efficiently quartries help identify and compress regions of an image with similar characteristics um another use case is collision detection in robotics so robotic systems employ quartries for collision detection in environments robots use quartries to efficiently check for obstacles and plan collision free paths and the last one would be database indexing for spatial path databases handling spatial data such as location based services or geospatial databases utilize quadtrees for indexing this accelerates queries related to spatial relationships and regions okay so i know most of these are not easy to visualize because we have not seen it in real life or we have not used them in our uh, daily work or practical scenario but uh, what you need to understand is uh, generally navigation maps um, which is what we encounter daily and that is enough for this so this concludes the discussion on uh, quadtree i think it was a very short video uh, but i have covered almost everything that's there to know about the quadtree so that's it thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe i will see you in the next one